Grace. And I'm Leah. And we're microbiologists at UC Berkeley. And today we're going to tell you a little bit about fungi! fungi. When you think of mushrooms, you might think of pizza or the scary mushrooms that your dog ate on the lawn. But in fact, the kingdom of fungi is very diverse. This includes mushrooms that you eat, yeast that you cook with, and mold that you find on your oranges. As young aspiring scientists, you might wonder, where do these mushrooms come from? Well, much like a seed makes a plant, mushrooms are born from something we call spores. When you see a mushroom, the gills you see on the other side are producing spores. When the spores fall, they start to create a new mushroom by making what mycologists call mycelium. However, spores are extremely small and you cannot see them with your naked eye. Luckily, when a lot of spores fall into one place, you can see them. This is what we call a spore print. And it's very important when you want to identify a mushroom and distinguish between edible and non-edible varieties. However, you never ever want to eat a mushroom you aren't 100% sure of its species. This is because some mushrooms are deadly poisonous. Some can kill you with just one bite. Now you might be asking, can I make a spore print at home? Actually, it's incredibly easy and I'll teach you. Let's get to it. The first step to making a spore print is finding a mushroom. Once you've found the mushroom, you want to be able to transport it safely back to your house. You want to get a really good spore print. So what you want to do is make sure that the mushroom stays preserved. You can buy wax bags or um, some people just case them in foil or something. But what I like is wax bags. Place the mushroom in the wax bag and then put it in a safe place where you know it won't be crushed. So I have a basket and I definitely recommend And go home. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, to start your spore print, you're gonna want some aluminum foil and a cup that has a large enough rim to fit your mushroom. You're gonna want to find a safe place that no one's gonna mess with. Um, so I'm gonna use this little cabinet um, in my living room. Okay. You're gonna Grab your mushroom out of the bag. See, it preserved pretty well. You're gonna wanna take off the stem. Um, I'm just gonna pop it off with my fingers. You can take it off with a knife. Um, it's actually probably more preferable to take it off with a knife. And then you're just gonna lay it down like this. Oop. Right in the middle. Get a nice and pretty spore print. All right, and then you're gonna put the cup over it. Um, and this is to make sure um, it's not messed with in any sort of way, like the wind doesn't take it away. You don't really need the cup, but. And then in one day's time, you can lift up your mushroom and see your spore print. And you can tell that they're in the pattern of the gills. How cool. So we just talked about how fungi reproduce using spores, but how do fungi eat? Remember, like Grace said, not all fungi look like the mushrooms we find in forests and in nature. In fact, there are plenty of fungi all around you all the time. Some fungi live in your gut and help digest food. Others are really important for helping us to make yummy foods like bread and cheese. You might actually have some of these fungi sitting in your kitchen right now that are used to make bread. This is called Saccharomyces cerevisiae, but you might know it by its more common name, yeast. To find out what fungi eat, we're actually going to do a fun experiment with yeast. If you don't already have some in your kitchen, it's easy to find at the store. Now, if you like candy and cake, you probably already think sugar is delicious. 
Well, it turns out yeast also really like sugar. In this experiment, we're going to watch and see if yeast are munching on this treat. All you need for this experiment is instant baker's yeast, warm water, be careful it's not too hot or it will cook the yeast, and some sugar. If you don't have white granulated sugar, you can also use brown sugar, honey, or syrup. We're going to mix one cup of warm water with half of these to activate it, since when it's dry, it can't do anything. And in one of the bowls, we're going to add two tablespoons of sugar or sweetener. Now it's important to make sure that the bowls are identical except for the sugar so that we know any differences between the bowls is because of the sugar. And we're going to let that sit for a little while, about 15 minutes, so the yeast can wake up. In the meantime, we'll talk about the science. So, we're going to put two teaspoons of yeast in each bowl. Then one cup of warm water. oxygen in the air, there's a chemical reaction in your body that lets you get energy by breaking down the molecules in your food. We call this respiration. When you breathe out, you release a gas called carbon dioxide, which is actually small pieces of the food you ate. Guess what? Yeast are doing pretty much the same thing. Now think about it. When you blow out air underwater, what do you see? Bubbles, right? So what do you think we'll see from the yeast in our bowls? if they are eating and breaking down food for energy. Bubbles. Let's stop and think. Which bowl do you expect to see more bubbles from? The bowl with the sugar or without the sugar? I'll give you a moment to think. We expect to see more bubbles when the yeast have something to eat. The sugar, right? Let's check and see. Now let's take a look at our experiment. This was the bowl without sugar, and you can see not much happened, no bubbles. But in the bowl where we added sugar, it's all frothed mm. up and bubbly. So it looks like we were right, the yeast were eating the sugar. Now I have another question for you to answer on your own. You probably know that we get different amounts of energy from different foods, right? Think about it. How do you feel when you've had a candy bar versus when you've had a carrot? You probably feel like running around a lot more after the candy bar, right? That's because different foods have different amounts of energy based on what they're made out of. This is true for what yeast eat too. If you're interested to find out how much energy yeast get from different foods, you can try this experiment again, but add a few more bowls of warm water with yeast and include two tablespoons of another food, maybe honey, maybe syrup, maybe molasses. After 15 minutes, you can take a peek to see how easy it was for the yeast to get energy out of these different food sources. If you see more bubbles, they were probably able to eat it better. See if you can find different things that yeast like to eat. And let us know what you try and what you see. Hope you learned a lot about fungi. If you have any questions, just reach out.